Hello, Africa fans out there. I'm back. First, Happy African American History Month, or as I prefer to call it, Happy Afro Ethnicity History Remembrance Month. Today, I want to talk to you about a topic often not discussed, but one that I have thought about much, and that is why is it that indigenous Africans and African Americans, although both groups ethnically African, are seen as two completely different groups of people, both amongst themselves and by the rest of the world. Why is that? Let's discuss this a bit. Could it be internalized racism, like this African in this video who said this during a global student conference some years ago? Now keep in mind, this young man in the video was a teenager then and is now a senior working for the African Union of all places. Let's roll the videotape down from the Middle East. You are not native African. No, not e at all. Ethiopian. As a matter of fact, you don't have the Negro blood at all. And uh, we migrated from uh, the Semitic type of the Saudi Arabia and Yemen and the countries just away from the uh, Red Sea. And the, I mean, the origin could be said that some people dra drafted and came to the northern part of Ethiopia. And then they migrated inwards. And time went on, they stayed and, uh, and stayed, and then the hermetic races from the bordering, the, from the south and from Sudan and things like that, from the countries but in if Africa. You, excuse me for interrupting, but if you don't have Negro blood, then, uh, this is news to me, the Ethiopians, I would think, wouldn't have any particular feeling about uh, race relations in other parts of Africa. We don't at all do, we don't at all feel any re relationship, we don't, it's none of our concern. I mean, we just don't care about it as we don't have the Negro blood, we shouldn't have to worry ourselves. I mean, the color you might, <laughs> the color of my face, it's just dark because it's due to the exposure of the sun. And my country is a mountainous country. It's 800 feet above sea level. And it's more or less nearer to the sun than is the other <laughs> countries that lay <laughs> near the equator. Yuma, yeah. you're not white? And not black? Not black. What yeah. are you? It's just in between. <laughs> Whew. Let us hope that his views have evolved with maturity since then. I'll link the whole exchange of this video for you at the end of the video. So, internalized racism pretty much comes from negative personal experiences of racism and discrimination that ultimately lead to an acceptance of stereotypes and prejudices against a person's own race and ethnicity. It's a psychological reaction to negative experiences and images, and this internalization is often from a subconscious level of awareness, right? But let us be clear, okay, that this internalization is not what happens to all people that experience such negative experiences. Trust me, I have had my share of racial experiences. And while it still bothers me to remember them and think about them, I'm even more of a diehard lover of my African roots because of those experiences. Okay, let's move on. Now, could the gap also be from a lack of understanding of one another? I certainly think so. So let's examine the relationship between Africans and African Americans with an emphasis on the social distance that exists between both groups. Africans and African Americans embody a genetic link and tie to Africa and that unites them both historically and socially. Both populations are also united by a two common struggle that they've experienced against European slavery and colonialism, right? Now the main difference in my opinion between the two groups is that one group's ancestors were caught and stolen, and the other group's ancestors were not. That is really the core difference to me, in my opinion. Now, in Eastern and Western Africa, several countries were colonized by European nations and remained that way until the 1950s and 1960s, when most of African countries became independent again in the 1960s. And in the United States, institutionalized Racial inequalities were removed about the same time in the 1960s during the Civil Rights Movement. Although a similar struggle against white European power unifies both populations, the social dynamics of that struggle has also played a significant role in the enormous distance 
that continues to exist between the two groups. Now, research shows that in spite of their common ancestry, Africans and African Americans remain separated by myths, mis uh, misperceptions, and negative stereotypes of one another, fed globally, globally by Western societies. And that's unfortunate. There are also several other factors that perpetuate this disconnection that exists between Africans and African Americans. And these factors include inaccurate portrayals in the media about African Americans and misrepresentation of the African continent as a whole. The fundamental lack of accurate history and presentations of Africa, the continent, whether intentional or unintentional, encourages the African American to reject African culture and value systems. And on the flip side, the same dynamic. Does that make sense? One major cause that stands out is that the problem lies with most African Americans not knowing enough about Africa, including the continent's history, especially pre-colonial pre colonialism history, when we were kings and queens, to be able to identify with indigenous Africans or the continent for that matter. Now, on a daily basis, Africans and African Americans are subjected to similar discriminatory experiences that reinforce ideals of white domination. And these experiences subsequently lead to individuals to the process of devaluing themselves. And the ideals that represent the African culture may then become a distant image. There needs to be a platform for both groups to discuss the social distance and dispel myths and stereotypes. Education also plays a significant role in the process of bringing both groups together and bridging the gap between them. Now, in closing, the late Malcolm X conveyed his belief on this very topic by saying that an acknowledgment of Africa and understanding of its history and various cultures was very important in enhancing the respectability of the African Americans. It's a deep topic, right? Now, I may continue this topic on my next video post because there's so much to discuss with scholarly guests, I hope, if they are available. Now, I'm calling, you some, I'm calling some of you out right now, Professors Darif Jameson, Professor Anton House, Dr. Kenneth Ward, and Professor James Taylor, not the singer, but the author and professor at USF. Email me if you want to discuss this topic further at Africa with Dr. Ayan at gmail.com. Well, once again, I wish you all a happy Afro-Ethnicity History Remembrance Month. Until next time, peace and love to you. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Hakuna Matata. I now leave you with a beautiful African-American anthem song, Lift Every Voice. Bye-bye, everyone. See you next time.
Jesus, we mourn. We.